In this solving basics for trig equations, we're going to look at the equation sine theta equals one. And so when we're solving this, we should think which angle has a sine of one. So solving equations is very similar to finding exact values. You're just working in the opposite direction. So let's see what this, this will look like. Okay, here is our breakdown. So we are adjusting this a little bit from some of the other ratios because when you're equal to positive one, negative one, zero, um, you aren't going to have a reference triangle because your angle answers that you're dealing with are actually what are called quadrantals or angles that have a terminal side that fall on an axis. Um, so you'll see we get to kind of streamline our steps here. So in step one, we'll do some quick analysis. We'll look at our quadrants, but again, our answers are going to be in the in-between of the quadrants um, or on the axes. So this ASTC, while it's really good to know and review, think all students take classes, and that helps you recall which trig functions are positive in each quadrant, we won't actually need that here because we're going to be working with those angles that are on the axis or on the axes, depending on what equation you're working with. Once we have a little picture, we'll be able to determine our angle answers and represent them in solution form. So again, we're solving sine theta equal to one, and let's start with our analysis. So recall that on the unit circle, sine is going to be the y coordinate or your vertical motion. And so we are looking for where the y coordinate is equal to positive one. And there's only one angle where that's true and that's going to be on the positive part of the y-axis. It's this right here. And remember one is the radius of the unit circle. Um, so that's how we know we moved all the way just up one. So that's at either 90 degrees or most likely you're dealing in radians. You're at pi over two. Um, so again, no reference triangle needed. You don't even have to do that part because your angle's on an axis. Um, we've already said that this is the only place where you're going to have a value for positive one as the y-coordinate. And so step two, we're really just recording this as our final answer. Um, so we can say that theta equals pi over two. Plug that back in to double check if you just want to be certain. We know that the sine of pi over two is equal to positive one. So that's our only solution on the unit circle or on that interval from zero to two pi. Now, if you're asked to solve this equation for all solutions, we do that simply by representing the solution in equation form. And so we basically want to say that our solution is pi over two and also all its coterminal angles. So to do this, we would say theta equals pi over two plus a full rotation is two pi k where k is an integer. And depending on what integer you substitute in, you'll get a different coterminal angle to pi over two, um, which will also be a solution to the above equation. Um, so try that out, substitute in different values for k, plug that value back in, you'll evaluate um, and, and know that you have a true equation. So thus you have a solution. Um, so that's really all there is to it. I really like when I see a trig function equal to positive one, negative one, zero, uh, just because I know I'm dealing with those quadrantal angles. And once you get used to it, it's actually a, a pretty easy equation to solve. Uh, so that's it. Check the video description if you want links to more worked out examples um, or help with anything else unit circle related um, or even exact values. Thanks for watching.